Hello, today I'm going to run an experiment and I'm going to show you or answer the question that everybody's been trying to figure out. Why do I have water in my lawnmower gas tank? Or it seems to always show up mostly in your lawnmower, your weed eater, your generator, or your gas cans like you see here on my left. And the question is where does the water come from? The water actually comes from the ethanol and what it's doing is, is extracting it from the air, just like in this garage. Right now I have two fans blowing and you can probably hear them. There's one. There's one. And what it's going to do is help dramatize my experiment. Yesterday I was cleaning a gas tank and after pouring the gas, uh, flushing the gas tank out about five different times, I continued to have water from the samples I was pulling from the tank trying to confirm that I had cleaned all the water out of the tank. Actually what it was is there was no water in the gas when I took it from this red can. Anyway, so what winds up happening is is whenever you take the, there's condensation in the air. There's ethanol, 10% ethanol in gasoline nowadays. So a friend of mine at the Deer Lease brought this to my attention. And as you can see, You've got probably a solid inch of water in the bottom of this sample. He pulled this out of his out of his uh, generator that was sitting on the back porch, never been exposed to any rain. It was only in the back. What happens is, is the tank expands. If you have a apparatus, which would be a lawnmower, a weed eater, a chainsaw, and it actually has a vent hole on it, and it sits out in the sun. I'm sure you understand that uh, it's going to make this red tank swell. Then when it contracts, it sucks air from outside back in. When it sucks that air back in, actually what it's doing is, is bringing in some of that Houston humidity. And then the ethanol is drawing the water out of that air that it just drew in. And the process continues to go over and over and over every day. So what winds up happening is the condensation and humidity is drawn from the air with the ethanol. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pour some gas into the pan. I'll let you see how fast it starts to turn milky white. And what winds up happening is those are only the air bubbles you see right now. Do you see it already starting to turn white? It's actually drawing the water out of the air and right now it's about 80 percent humidity here in Houston and it's about three o'clock in the afternoon. And that white is actually fine molecules of water beads and it's drawing it from the air and the fan is blowing across the top of it which is increasing the time that this is happening. But you can already start to see water bubbles forming. Let's kind of zoom in on it, let's see some of the water bubbles right there. So you can see that it's already starting to develop water. There was no water in the gas when we started. That gas just came from the gas station pump and I confirmed that the sample was clean. So you can already start to see the water sample, I mean the water bubbles, hopefully, starting to develop. So, now I'm going to give it a second because so I want it to continue drawing moisture out and then I'm going to shake it around like tame for gold and let you see actually how much water falls out in this little volume of gasoline. You can already start to see the bigger bubbles. The bigger bubbles of uh, water starting to build up on the right hand side of the pan. There you go. That's water being drawn from the atmosphere and the humidity in the air. So, now we're Agitate it up a little bit. And catch all those molecules. Run it to one side of the pan. And you can see we're only dealing with about probably 10 teaspoons. As you can see in the right hand side of this pan right now, water. So there's the answer to your question. Where does the water come from? 
It's not coming from a fuel station. It's not coming from the gas can. It actually is coming from the humidity in the air and the ethanol is drawing it from the fuel. And this is one of the problems that the new boat owners are having. So in other words, if you actually have a boat that's an older boat, it's going to draw water just like this. If you actually have a lawnmower that does not have a return system or a system that's a closed system like the new cars have nowadays, new cars have a closed system so this does not happen in your car, but it does happen in your boat, your lawnmower, your weed eater. And this is just an example now to prove beyond a shadow of a doubt how it's taking place. So you can see the water on the side very clearly now. That's a good percentage of water in a pretty small amount. So there you have it.